Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, construction worker tries to throw away a small box at a gas station, but is told it's not allowed. He filling up the trash cans with small items from his truck. The second story, arrogant nonprofit loses $10 million a year due to greed and fires volunteer who boosted revenue to $15 million. The third story, driver suggests an alternate route to a passenger who declines and insists on their own route. After getting stuck in traffic and arriving late, the passenger complains and threatens to report the driver. Today's first story is, can't throw away a small box because it'll fill up the trash can? Fine, I'll just clean my truck out. For a little context, I'm a construction worker with my own company truck. As far as from what I have seen in my area, most people with company trucks have this thing where the front two seats always stay very clean. Aside from the dirt that comes from working in my field of work, the back seats, however, are a different story. It is amazing how much trash gets thrown back there, whether it be water bottles, snack wrappers, food wrappers, etc. My company has a contract with a local detailer that comes and washes and vacuums all company trucks bi-weekly to keep the appearance up. We're just responsible for removing all large trash so they don't have to do much work. Usually we just throw out everything at the dumpster at the shop before the detailer goes in and works his magic. Anyways, on to the story. So today I had just finished up a service call and was about to go on my lunch break. I had stopped at a local gas station near downtown Austin to pour gas right before I headed off to get some tacos. As I'm pouring gas I look in the back of my tailgate and realized I forgot to throw away at the job site and didn't want to run the risk of it flying out and possibly causing an accident. So naturally I decided to take it out, break the box down and toss it in the trash can at the pump. Now the box itself wasn't too big, about the size of a shoe box, and once broken down it was probably about a quarter of that size. As I took the broken down box and placed it in the trash, one of the ladies who worked at the gas station came out furious saying I wasn't allowed to throw away that box. She claimed the trash was only for smaller items, and we weren't allowed to throw away larger things. I was really confused and told her that it really wasn't all that big and I didn't see an issue. She then argued that the cardboard can unravel and fill up the bin, and then she would have to replace the bags. I didn't feel like arguing so I just obliged and took out the box and placed it back in the tailgate. She thanked me for not being so difficult and was about to go into the gas station before I stopped her and asked, so then what can I throw away in the trash? She replied with anything small like water bottles, taco bags, wrappers, etc. Now cue the malicious compliance. I, after she said that, I thanked her for letting me know and proceeded to open the back door to my truck, and she got a hold of all the mess. I then proceeded to take out small loads of empty water bottles, taco bags, etc. It is truly amazing how much trash builds up in these construction trucks. Unless one had been recently cleaned out, I've never seen one with little to no mess. I think I'm pretty good at tossing this stuff out of my truck, but every two weeks when I submit my truck for cleaning, it always baffles me with how much mess is in there. I then proceed to stuff the trash can with trash and fill it up. Now granted these trash cans already had trash in them and weren't all that big and I really didn't press down the trash to make more fit. I then proceeded to move to the next trash can and started filling that one up, all while looking her with the biggest smirk on my face. She then proceeded to tell me that I can't be throwing out that much stuff because it's only meant for small things that I bought from the store. I then proceeded to show her that almost all this stuff can be bought at the store she was working at. She then screams at me saying that there's no way I bought everything there and that I probably got some from other places as well. I then pulled out my company gas card that was from her gas station and told her that this was the only gas station that I'm allowed to use while in this vehicle. So yes, I come to this store a lot since it's right by my job, and most of this other than the taco wrappers comes from here. She then proceeded to call me an AH and a few other names as she stormed off into the store. I just sat there with such a huge feeling of accomplishment, knowing that I dealt with that Karen accordingly. If she would have just let me throw out the small box, you wouldn't have to come out and replace the trash bags right now and could be sitting inside on your phone but now you gotta come out and do the job you're getting paid to do. It must suck to actually have to do what you were hired to do, all because you thought some small pieces of cardboard would fill up one little trash can. Little words of advice, next time mind your own business. Haha, <laughs> this poor gas station employee had no idea what she was getting herself into when she confronted this guy, about throwing away a small box. Karen got what she wanted, right? She was able to keep the shoebox sized cardboard out of the trash can, and instead got a whole lot of small trash to deal with. Mind your own business or you might just end up doing more work than you bargained for. Good on this guy for taking responsibility and cleaning out his truck, even if it was out of spite. And to top it all off, he even had the receipts to prove that all the trash came from that gas station. 
That's some top-notch pettiness right there. The second story is... Entitled nonprofit goes from $10 million a year to zero due to arrogance and greed. So I volunteered with a nonprofit service club for almost two decades. We had a fundraiser, legally licensed gambling in our country that would gross $1.5 million per year. There were only a dozen members, so we didn't do much except hang out, volunteer for other charities, and redonate the money with a big presentation check. In 2019, we fired one of the two employees for our fundraiser. I agreed to work for three months as a contractor at $25 an hour until they found a replacement. I found ways to improve the fundraiser and turn $1.5 million in annual sales into $8 million after only nine months. Then COVID hit and I revamped everything again to get us $15 million annual sales, $10 million net profit in six months. I was working my A off putting in 50 to 60 hour weeks sometimes. The club was pressuring me to submit an invoice as I hadn't been paid the entire time. I wasn't motivated to charge anything since my original intent was to work for free for three months, but finally submitted a discounted invoice for 52k for the past 15 months, after we all agreed I'd been working too long, and they dropped the ball in their intention to hire a replacement. They paid, but freaked out on me and accused me of greed, fraud, incompetence, etc. A combination of their behavior and them being greedy, pushing for massive donations that would get them ahead in their professions, spending money on fancy gala dinners and golf tournaments with the rich elite of the community, etc and I was frustrated and peeved beyond belief. I stuck around, and sometimes got guilted by members into staying after multiple attempts to quit, for another year out of loyalty to my staff, almost two dozen at that point, and the charities I was involved with for decades. But I finally broke and walked away at the end of 2021. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. Before leaving, I was implementing a two-part plan for another revamp of the fundraiser to keep up with the huge sales and prizes. Each part had benefits and consequences individually, so they had to be implemented together to balance each other out. The first part took a long time to plan before I left, and once it was ready it was easy to put the second part in action right away. I reported what I was doing to the club, and they accused me of being incompetent once again for not understanding the consequences of the second part of the plan. They didn't understand the big picture, but I was tired of arguing with them. I implemented the first part as they had approved because everything was already changed over and impossible to revert back. I didn't try to convince them at all about the second part being necessary, and left them to deal with the consequences after quitting. A year later, they're accusing me of sabotaging them and not explaining the need for the second part. The fundraiser has fallen apart this past year with less than $2 million in sales, but still with massive expensive, as well as a half-aid revamp system bleeding money. They've reportedly lost money this year and have no idea what went wrong. I deleted all my documents and plans when I returned to work laptop to them, also as malicious compliance because they asked for it in original condition and ready for someone new to use. Edit. The fraud they were accusing me of wasn't in the millions of dollars, if that makes it any better, huh? <laughs> they just like to use exaggerated corporate or legal language to make an empty point without merit. They accused me of exaggerating my work hours that I was billing for solely because I never complained about working long hours. They accused me of improper financial practices, which got turned into the word fraud because the club didn't have good enough history or credit for some of the necessary transactions. So I put up my own personal credit and technically bankrolled the project. They worked their butt off, turned $1.5 million into $15 million, and got accused of greed and fraud. The club accused them of incompetence, while they were the ones who couldn't understand the big picture. But OP didn't let them get the last laugh. Oh no, they implemented a two-part plan, and left the club to deal with the consequences. Now the fundraiser has fallen apart, and they have no idea what went wrong. Hopefully the non-profit can get their act together and start making a positive impact again. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, especially when it's working for free. And if you accuse someone of incompetence, make sure you're not the incompetent one. It's simple logic, folks. The last story is... You want me to take this route? If you say so. So I'm a rideshare driver, Uber and Lyft. As a driver, I'm not an employee, I'm an independent contractor. Which essentially means that as long as I don't break the law or violate the Uber and Lyft TOS, I was free to do as I please. Including kicking riders out of my car if I felt it was necessary. Only ever did it once. I'm a very patient and tolerant person. I always do what I can to make my riders comfortable and get them to their destination safely, such as recommending a better route. I'm a fairly decent rated driver, 4.97 on Uber and 4.98 on Lyft, so that tells you that a lot of people enjoyed having me as a driver. I live in a fairly decent sized city. To get from one side of town to the other takes, if you're lucky, 30 to 40 minutes. If you hit traffic, it can take longer. Traffic in this town isn't as bad as other places, but it can still suck. I dealt with a lot of people who clearly don't know about the traffic here, 
and who also don't plan their time properly, so they're late and expect me to break the traffic laws for them. One day I was in the northwest part of the city. It's about 4 p.m. when rush hour starts. Got a ride request. The rider, we'll call him Eli, confirms that he's got to go to the other side of town for a meeting. Problem is he has to be there in 20 minutes. As an experienced driver, I know the routes and know the best way to go. The conversation when Eli gets in goes a little like this. Eli, I'm going to blank. I need to be there in 20 minutes. Me, yes sir, there's heavy traffic right now, and normally the drive takes 30 minutes. With the traffic, it'll take about 35 to 40 minutes. Might I suggest an alternate route that'll save some time? Eli, no, if you take a different route, I'll get charged more for it. Me, sir, I'm an experienced driver. I'm suggesting this alternate route to get you to your destination safely and as close to 20 minutes as we can. Wouldn't have mattered as again 30 minutes from one side of town to the other. Eli, I don't give a care. I'm not paying more. Take this route and step on it. I can't be late. Me, if you insist, sir. So we head out. I make sure to go only the speed limit, not a mile over. And sure enough, we get stuck in traffic. By the time we hit traffic though, an accident had occurred, thus slowing us down even more. Eli was not a happy customer. He's getting annoyed at the fact we're being delayed and is very verbal about his displeasure, blaming me for the fact that he planned poorly. We finally reach his destination. The traffic plus accident meant it took almost 50 minutes. As we pull up to his destination, he gets mad at me. Eli, what the hell? I'm 30 minutes late now. I told you to step on it. Me, sir, I did suggest an alternate route, but you insisted I stick to the route suggested on the map. Eli, I don't care. I told you when I had to be here, I'm going to complain to Uber about your SH driving. Me, sir, you're free to do so. Just note that I happen to have a dash cam with dual cam and it's always on, so it has me suggesting an alternate route to you. Complain if you want, but I'll happily provide the footage to Uber to counteract your claim. Eli, F you a-hole, you're an SH driver. Me as we pull up to his destination. And you have a wonderful day, you clearly wonderful man. Naturally, he did complain to Uber, saying I was rude and tried to screw him over by long hauling him. Told him that I have dash cam footage of the entire ride, including the facts that I had suggested a faster route and that he was rude to me and I would be happy to send it to them to prove the footage. They replied and told me that it wasn't necessary, that my rating would be fine and to have a good day. Long hauling is essentially taking a route that unnecessarily adds distance and time to a route for the purpose of making more money on the fare. Common tactic used by cabs and some rideshare drivers as well. Eli takes the cake for being a complete jerk. He wants to get to his destination in 20 minutes but doesn't want to pay extra for a better route. So naturally he gets stuck in traffic and blames the driver for his poor planning. And then he has the audacity to complain about the driver's SH driving. But the driver had a dash cam and was ready to prove him wrong. Don't mess with a driver who has a dash cam. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.